Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and we are actually live this time, so that's a bonus. <laughs> To, to like five minutes of podcast before realizing we weren't broadcasting. So that's a thing. Anyway, 100% my fault. I take the blame. I throw myself out the airlock later. This week on the podcast, we are talking about Star Wars Rebels. And the P- Nobility had a premiere uh, two weeks or so ago. So we've dragged EJ on and um, <laughs> EJ's friend who can introduce himself. Uh, Ow. Ow. Yeah, I, he's told me the name like four times in the past three minutes, and I've already forgotten it. Just yeah. name is Jeremy, and I am the editor for Nobility. That's good because I almost and called you were you, always always called you Justin, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I had the J right. I had the J right. Damn it! <laughs> Go on, move it along. Yeah. Anyway. We've also got Amy and Stuart joining us this week, and hiding somewhere in the background is also Eugene. Hello. There he is. Um, so let's kick it off by talking about the Nobility premiere. Um, that happened on the 31st, so a little under two weeks ago. How did that go for you guys? Went great. Uh, we had an awesome red carpet, uh, and we had a, a great panel with you know Walter and and Darren and a, bu- and a bunch of other uh, nobility alumni. And uh, then we ran into some technical difficulties. You know what happened is the night before, uh, computer crashed and wiped out a bunch of stuff. So we we're like frantically having to rebuild everything last minute. But we did it, we got it there, and the audience loved it. Like, the, the first question after, because we did a really quick uh, Q&A after everything, uh, the first question was, where can they get more? When's the <laughs> next one coming out? Um, and so, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, uh, and there's been a lot of good press since then, and just, yeah, been uh, just uh, you, t- going, using this uh, to uh, um, kind of launch the show and, uh uh, get a lot of opportunities, and we got a lot of stuff coming up. Not much I can go into publicly yet, but let's just say we got a lot of great stuff coming up. S- sounds good. I've seen nothing but posts coming across your wall of nobility is spectacular. Nobility is awesome. So I'm I'm glad to hear that it was very well received. The only question I have is where is my copy, and when do I get to watch it? Um, I don't know. Come to the U.S. <laughs> uh, that won't be in a hurry. I'd fly there, but I need to charge my Iron Man suit first, and it's kind of flat. Might take 20 or 30 years. Uh, no, man. Um, like I said, we, we had those technical difficulties, so I'm actually, before I send any copies out, I want to go back and, and fix a few things. And then uh, once that's done, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and send you a copy, bro. Sounds sounds good. So definitely, looking, yeah. definitely, definitely looking forward to, to watching that. Um, yeah, it just come with an NDA, that's all. Yeah. Uh, of course, I, I, I won't torrent it across the internet. Oh, uh, you you could, and then you'd owe me every dime you ever make for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is interesting because I make. I'm, I'm not sure if you heard me. He's like, yeah, but and we could use that. So he's not paying me for this. So I'm doing this. <laughs> don't tell me, Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it if it makes you feel any better, I don't get paid to do this anyway, so I'll be giving you a whole lot of no money. <laughs> No, we've been we've been really uh, really fortunate that because we have our like extremely micro budget, and the reason we've been able to hit the um, production values we've been able to get, which um, in, in in many cases rivals even even uh, uh, production TV in, in, in some instances um, or, or uh, uh, normal TV. But the reason we've been able to do that is because a lot of folks have come on board either just to help out 
or for reduced rates and things like that just because they believe in the project. Yeah. And uh, Jeremy here has been one of our one of our uh, great supporters who's been helping us out with that. So I believe in nobility. Yeah. It's, <laughs> he puts up with me to do it. Yeah. From the bits and pieces I've seen, it's definitely, definitely going to be spectacular. So really looking forward to it. I want to like it out. You sound like me, like, the day after the premiere. I was not coherent. I'd been up for, like, 60 hours straight. And, like, <laughs> and before that, I'd been up, like, like I'd gotten, like, nothing but cat naps for the three dates before that. So I was like, yeah. Dead. So, so effectively, <clears throat> the, the person controlling your speech was a cat just randomly walking around on a keyboard. <laughs> Actually, I think that would have been more coherent. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. so well come on. I'll give you a whole 15 minute segment we talk for like five it's just <laughs> well i can keep going you know go for it T- tell us all about it what sort of questions were you asked at the the pre-show what sort of i don't know it's things and stuff go you go <laughs> i never said uh... this was a professional podcast <laughs> I don't know anyone that would call this a professional podcast. <laughs> and if they do, there's something really wrong with them. Okay. Excuse me, hold on. I'm going to talk for a little bit. <laughs> yes, EJ is currently dying in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was a good night for it? Um, yeah, I mean, we had lots and lots of people waiting in anticipation uh, even with our technical issues, a lot of people looked past it and saw it for what it was. You know, uh, you know, as a, as the editor, when it's it's hard to see it on in a different perspective as an audience member, because all you just see is all the stuff you did wrong or the things you did right. And then, you know, I've looked at this thing hundreds of hundreds of times, so I know every single line of dialogue. So, like, I'm just repeating myself. <laughs> and making sure that I'm saying it out loud or telling someone, hey, wait, 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 it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> so, you know. So what you're saying is there was a sex scene. Wait, 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 it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> well, there, well there, uh, though there actually is, there is a, a, a scene because we're showing the captain, you know, loves women and we do show something. It's not, it's, you know, it's Star Trek-y. <laughs> not, uh, not rated R. Uh, even though we didn't make... There are some language in it. So, so what you're saying is that he dressed EJ in a bikini and made him make out with the captain. Yes, he did his own stunts. Let's put it that way. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, no longer to see it now. <laughs> uh, for for me, in regards to nobility, this is actually my very first doing sci-fi of any kind. Um, I've grown up wanting to do sci-fi. That's why I got into the business. I wanted to do that. Uh, so that's partly why, you know, I, I love this project so much <laughs> that I get to work on a sci-fi project at all. Um, I've been working for five years in reality TV. And it oh, you poor bastard. Called. You yeah. poor, poor bastard. <laughs> yes, wow. I, 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 I helped create uh, the lovely Jersey Shore uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm Should part we of yell him just for that? Yeah. He's <laughs> just fired right now just for saying that. Like, you were on Jersey, so fired. Hey, <laughs> like, money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, uh, I wanted to be an editor since high school, um, but I never had the the way to make footage. You know, yeah. uh, I'm mean, a good editor. But uh, I didn't like doing the other aspects of it, you know, filming it myself, putting it all together. And then when I was editing projects, a lot of people took it away from me because a lot of people uh, have to do it all themselves because they can't let it go. They can't uh, yeah. let other people do it. That's what, what's cool about EJ is that that's exactly what he did. He let me do my job. Yeah. He trusted me to let me do my job versus I did it and then EJ, you know, shut when himself in a room. Does it, does it all himself, and then nothing's left of me. Yeah, I mean that's one of the things with with uh, lower budget uh, anything, especially you know, including sci-fi, is you get a lot of folks who 
<clears throat> either because they can't afford it or because they can't let it go, they they just jump in and rather than actually, you know, assembling a team and leading, they um, they just jump in and do it themselves. Whereas I'd much rather Jeremy knows, you know, I'm I, I'm not bad with short form editing. Um uh, you know, and I have my skill set there, but Jeremy knows editing uh, a lot better than I do. And so, with sitting there working together, you know, discussing, okay, do we, do we, uh, you know, end it here? Do we move it here? Do we move that there? You know, things like that. We end up with a much, much better um, uh, product than if I just sat there and tried to do it all by myself. Yeah. Especially since uh, you've been awake for 60 hours. It- who knows if I, <laughs> exactly so, so halfway through a lightsaber battle it jumps to people shooting phases and then jumps to a stargate you're just like what am i watching yes i keep him saying and go hey we we either don't have this footage because i know it more than he does because i watched it more than he does and he's got a million things on his plate versus also uh it doesn't work story-wise because i i think the whole big picture but because ej's got a million things on his mind he might not be thinking about the big yeah. picture. He just saw what he just saw. Yeah. Right. And, and what he's talking about is like, it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about, <clears throat> you know, assembling a team. A lot of reason why uh, folks don't move out of the low budget um, uh, film production is because they can't um, put together a team in the, uh, of people they can trust. And so while I'm, you know, so what I did and, and I always like to do, put together a team of folks who know what they're doing and, and I can trust them. And then Jeremy knows the edit a lot better than, than I would because he's sitting there living with it day after day after day, yeah. which allows me to sit there and go, okay, now let's go get a, a, a color. So let's go get VFX people. Let's go, go make sure, you know, yeah. the cast is happy. Let's make sure we got a good DP. And then I can get that top down picture and I'm not having to micromanage every little aspect, which again allows us to pool all of our talents uh, and get a better product, and no one person is getting overwhelmed. Exactly. In theory. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, but, it's, 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 so effectively, the way it worked was that you'd go out, do the, help them do the shoot, give the dailies to. Um, ha! Done it again. <laughs> oh God! Damn. Wow, my brain is just not working. <laughs> we moved it to Tuesday, so I wouldn't get I, my brain be out of juice from work, but it's not helping. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for Nobility, how it ended up happening was uh, I met <coughs> EJ through a mutual friend, and all I was going to do was just do kind of a trailer moment stuff for, for Comic-Con, and that was it. You know, that's all I was going to do, and it just kind of, like, over time, he just gave me more things to do. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, now I'm the editor. Okay, got it, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when so, that happens. So when we did this... Uh, he had his original shoot dates, and then he went back uh, to do pickups and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, when we assembled the cut, we can figure out what we needed, what we wanted to do, what wasn't working. You know, so that helps uh, as having a separate opinion on it. Because he wrote it, and he was there while shooting it, so he has a different perspective than I would. So I can look past all of the... The yeah. problem, the issues, the things that he didn't, didn't get uh, or he just forgot about. Yeah. Right, because... <coughs> excuse me. Like, we had, you know, we shot it, or I wrote it, and then because of either different people coming on board, uh, you know, the director would shoot it one way or we didn't have the budget to do, you know, X, Y, Z thing. Uh, you know, what, what we ended up shooting was slightly different. And then, you know, working with Jeremy, you know, he's got his outside uh, perspective and I've got my, my inside perspective. You know, we could sit there and just piece it together and, and you know, like you're saying, you know, throw out stuff that didn't work or figure out, okay, this is, this is something that we, we're missing narratively, so we need to add it to the pickup days, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, and then to answer your questions from before, when I was coughing too much to be able to <laughs> actually you know, speak, uh, or, 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 bre- or breathe for that matter. Yeah, by the sound of it. Well, I, I, I couldn't help. I, I could hear you dying in the background. I couldn't help but giggle a little. <laughs> <laughs> You're just waiting for me to die, aren't you? Well, I, I figure you, that happens. I go over, raid the nobility set for all its cool toys, disappear. No one can find me. 
<laughs> I knew you were evil. I knew it. <laughs> One little problem. You're in Australia. Mike and I are here in the U.S. And I, I split it 50-50 with Michael. True. True. But anyway, to answer your questions... <laughs> Uh, we were actually, we got a lot of questions after the panel. A lot of folks were interested, um, some about the characters, but mostly, or, or, some were interested in the characters, and we also got a lot of questions about, like, the story, the universe, what's happening next, you know, how do the Eugens fit in with everything, how, you know, yeah. uh, especially since the first story ends on a cliffhanger. People were like, what? What's playing next? I want to know more. Nice. I know that feeling. Yeah. Did you, did, you, so, did you throw in an after credit scene that made no sense? <laughs> no, but there were certain people who were very upset that we didn't. Because <laughs> 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 shot some stuff and it just it, it didn't fit and, and, and it wasn't working. And uh, we were uh, specifically with our art director, and uh, you know it, it just it didn't fit into the into the broader narrative. It would have just been this random thing, and and uh, afterwards I'm I'm getting an earful from him because uh, you know he, he's Cuban. They they like to bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leave but... that alone. Just just hands up, walking away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I give him a hard time. Um, uh, 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 but yeah, he, uh, so yeah, he, he, he crabbed a bit, but, uh, other than that, no. <laughs> uh. So how was it working with some of the actors you had? Uh, you know what? They're, they're a great group of folks. Um, not only are they like professional and, and, uh, uh, fun to work with, but they, they know their craft and, uh, you know, there, there's a scene or two that I'm thinking we're, we might put out. Um, uh, as uh, as uh, kind of like uh, uh, preview kind of stuff online, and you'll see like you know <coughs> both are established, yeah, you know, our, our cast who are, who are already established uh, celebs, and those who aren't um, are absolutely amazing actors who who know their stuff, and you know, and I'm saying that not just as a writer producer, but as a fellow actor. Nice. So yeah, and it, it, and it, 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 just a lot of fun working with these folks, and and some of these folks, I mean, I literally grew up um, from you know two, Watch, three, four. Years old. Watching them on TV and stuff. Yeah, you know, watching them on TV, and so so there's a bit of uh, for for some of the cast, there's a little bit of of like hero worship, and like, wait, they're actually on something I'm doing. Wait, what? Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just it, it, you know it's cool because um, you know before I started this project, I never thought um, that I would get to the point where I'd be like, you know, hell oh, yeah, let's just call up and ask Walter to lunch, or you know, you know, see how Chris Judge is doing, you know, send him a text, you know, things like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So I don't know if Jeremy has any any comments along those lines. Uh, he, he didn't spend too much time on set, but he was yeah, there. Um, I was there for a couple of days because EJ wanted everything now, now, now. <laughs> I'm the producer. It's my job to be that asshole. <laughs> Plus, I was in a corner. He put me in a corner, and I was transferred you, footage on. Were you naughty? Did he put you yeah. in a naughty corner? <laughs> no. Are you a yeah. bad boy. Did you, did, you, did you edit him out of the, out of the series? Because we wouldn't blame you if you edited him out. Edited who out? You. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't blame me either. Yeah, he, had, he had one scene. So what, I, I always joke when he gets mad at me, I said, hey, you know, I can just press delete and this goes away. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start being really nice. So, yeah, I have all the power. He has none. <laughs> uh, me, if I have the same thing. You know, a lot of the actors that were on set when I was there, I was kind of like nerding out and saying, "Hey, I'm working with these people, but uh, you know, I'm also a professional, and I don't, I generally don't bug people for autographs, pictures, because it's a professional set, so I generally don't do that unless it's Walter Koenig." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Walter's awesome. Right, yeah. We met Walt. He came over here. Oh, would have been what over twelve months ago now. Um, actually, it was last. No, it was start of this year. He came over. He was brilliant to have a chat too. So, 
So. Yeah, I was saying, it was it was sometime this year. I thought um, yeah. where it was it, for it some was con, like yeah. a, a, April for Supernova. Ah, there you go. What's the con that's coming up that Chris is on? Supernova, is... Brisbane, <laughs> Supernova Brisbane. Brisbane. You need to get me some cards or something so I can get them signed by him. Yeah, we could do that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, talk to me. Talk to me after. Will do. So, yeah. I only go and okay. get his signature again. Again, yeah. Give him my phone number again. I mean, <laughs> 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 I only go and get a photo signature done with him again. I'm I'm tempted to invite him to go to Australia Zoo. <laughs> That'd be pretty. Don't funny. they get taken there anyway? Yeah. yeah. Or one of the zoos. They, they, it depends. Or Dreamworld, somewhere with koalas. Yeah, they need to get their photos with koalas. It's a, so it's an American thing, isn't it? Every American wants to get a photo with a with a koala. Oh damn straight! Oh, yeah. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> they're not cute and innocent. Oh, they're, they're... I hear they're actually really like the wild ones are really mean and will like tear you up. Yes, no, we're yeah. American. <laughs> and give you chlamydia. <laughs> yeah, and they've all got chlamydia, so you got to be really careful of that. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah, it's actually they're on the verge of extinction because large percentage of the population is being killed off by chlamydia. Wow. Why don't they just give them antibiotics? <laughs> Clap goes away with antibiotics. Not it doesn't true. work like that in koalas. Okay, we're off topic. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's continue. Let's start. We continue talking about uh, STDs. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, space transmitted diseases. Yeah. So that so that, that explains why you Earth, basically. <laughs> I, was, I was just like <laughs> the ca... so the captain hey, of the. Guys... Thank Did you, you guys much. see that uh, uh, robot what's chicken? It called? Yeah, the robot chicken <laughs> STD. <laughs> it was just pissing rainbows. Okay. <laughs> the treble. Uh, do we want to finish talking about nobility, <laughs> or do we want to move on? Well, I was going to make a joke that the captain and the nobilities probably should get checked every now and again. But yeah, I think half the captains in the star fleet should be checked. Yeah. Any of them. <laughs> Especially oh, Jane Yes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, moving right along. Um, let's move on to the next thing. Star Wars Rebels. Yes, Rebels. Rebels. Watch that. You you guys up to date on that? Uh, no. I'm not, but go ahead with your spoilers. I, I, know, not... I know Stuart is. Oh, hell yes. It's the newest cartoon. Yeah, yeah. I kind of never liked the cartoon stuff. I, I like Star Wars, but uh, I I had the misfortune of watching it on the big screen. I used to work in a movie theater, so I had to watch it twice, and I fell asleep both times. So for Clone Wars, <laughs> yeah, for Clone Wars. Wow, oh, no. the movie was eh. the series is better. Like... The series is great. Yeah, the movie. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Just because I hated, uh, really just because I hated early Ahsoka. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I have a lot of TV to watch, so I watch a lot of things. Animated stuff, I don't usually take a back seat. So. Yeah. Well, you, you should try Clone Wars because it's, it's not like a kid show per se. Like it, 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 it's simple enough to be a kid show, but they deal with a lot, a lot, like a lot of really adult things. So yeah, it's, and there's it's a lot of, and there's a lot of episodes that. They do not focus on Obi Wan and Anakin. There's a lot where they delve into just the clones, or they delve into other characters. Yeah, it's it's I definitely did, worth it's really watching. Good to learn the expanded universe. Yeah, well, considering the expanded universe now consists of the Clone Wars First. animated series, Rebels animated series, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, when I say. EJ, you there? I think we lost him. EJ's gone. So yeah, back to Rebels. Yeah, anyway, back to Rebels. <laughs> He'll jump back in in a minute. Nope, he's gone. Gone. I'll try and get EJ back. Um, I'll talk about Rebels. Yeah, let's start jump to talking about Rebels. Do the thing. So yeah, uh, Rebels is back. And uh, we're up to this is episode six this week. Yeah, someone that we've been so busy the last couple of weeks, I haven't had a chance I to cover think it. It's the Vader one that came early, and then there's the two clones. 
clones, the Inquisitor one, and, and then the Honda Harry, one. You, 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 you cut us off, or... No, uh, no, no, you guys dropped out, legitimately dropped out. We're just sitting here waiting and just went silent. We're like, um, EJ? No. No, you're, you're just pissed silent. that we started talking about space transmitted diseases. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, yeah, whatever episode we're up to, it doesn't really matter that much to it, but... Um, it's actually looking really, really good. A lot better than the first season. Yeah. Yeah. It started off... Started back fairly strong with the... Reintroducing the clone troopers. And oh, really? putting the clone trooper walker up against an at <laughs> And showing That's that hilarious. the clone troopers absolutely wreck... Um, yeah, we're gone again. The, the modern troopers. Oh, it's gotta be you. You're still there, EJ. We can hear you. Alright, turn off your Skype on your phone. Good. Doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just listen to them. <laughs> That's more entertaining than what we're talking about. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so the clone troopers take on the AT-ATs, and that was actually a really interesting fight because the AT-ATs look less advanced than the clone trooper ships, the clone trooper walkers. Yeah. Um, and the clone troopers effectively proved that by. Smashing their way through three AT-ATs. So, that was pretty cool to watch. So wait, the AT-ATs are less durable than the Clone War ones? Oh, the Clone the Clone Wars one is old and broken and held together by sticky tape and chewing gum. And they take on three AT-ATs and manage to hold their own. That's not bad. Yeah. It was, it was a real, it's really good episode, really good story. Um... And then the next one, this is probably my favourite episode, is the uh, when they reintroduce the Inquisitors. Yeah, they reintroduce the Inquisitors, which was really cool. I love, I love, I love this purely based on the fact that um, Freddie Prince Jr. is um is the voice of Kanan, and his wife is the seventh sister. <laughs> oh, nice. And then that, like I just like I love the irony of it. Yeah, <laughs> the irony is so good. Oh, well, no, it was a really, it was a really spooky episode. Yeah, it a was. Old abandoned um, uh, medical uh, Republic medical facility, looking for supplies. <laughs> Instead, they find two Inquisitors. Yeah. They have a bit of a bad day for that one. Yeah, I love and I love the way um how spooked um Zeb gets. Oh yeah. <laughs> She's just like, nope, I'm out. Uh. Big tough guy. Season the Inquisitor. <laughs> yeah, but you blame him after what happened with the last Inquisitor. True. And EJ's gone again. He'll blame you, don't worry. Oh, EJ's back again. It was back a minute ago. Yeah. I oh, just dropped for a second that oh. time. EJ, can you hear us? Do you not like us talking about Star Hello. Wars? Oh, he's gone again. <laughs> EJ the whenever. connection yo yo. Anyway, um, so yeah, so help. I've actually been really enjoying it so far. Mm. Um, the next couple episodes look like they're going to be really, really interesting. Yeah. So, because I can't wait to I can't I can't wait for the scene where we finally get to see Ahsoka go up against the Inquisitors. Just I want to see how how much her training's advanced. Yeah, and how powerful she is now compared to what she was. It's definitely going to be interesting to see. Mm. And um, I remember when they released the trailer, I think it was back at Comic-Con. Oh, or a while like ago, was, yeah. Um, it, um, I remember there was an important thing that it, it, um, said that Ezra's parents are alive somewhere, so that'll be an interesting um, Twist. story arc to come into as well. Exactly. So, so EJ's having some real issues getting back. Cool. Anyway... Um, so yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it, it's been good so far, and then this week, and this is throwing Stuart under the bus a little because I forgot to warn him about this, Uh oh. the international trailer dropped. Oh yeah, which, uh, I, found, which I found at the wee hours of Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, I saw it because I saw my friend share, I'm like, huh? I thought, I like, when I first saw it, I'm thinking, no, this is fake, I click on it, I'm like, this is not fake. This is another trailer. <laughs> With all new footage. 
Yeah, and a substantially clearer shot of the person at the end. So. Yeah, well, uh, still a bit of debate over who it is. Yeah, I'm fairly convinced. I'm fairly convinced to one in one direction. All right, well, who do you think it is? Chewy. I I've changed. I'm backflipped to who I think it is. I think it's Finn after he's fought Kylo Ren because it's in the snow forest. So I think it's after they've had their fight, and I think he's like lost a hand or something. Yeah, but you don't see Finn wearing anything like that woolen gear that he's wearing. But the same sort of color hair pattern, that same. Sort yeah, of no, fur but if patterns. you look um, closer to like where her face is, you see the leather jacket, and, the, and there's that red tinge. Yeah. On his on Finn's jacket, on his leather jacket, he's got a red mark on the side of it. Yeah, I still think it's chewy. I think it'd be a lot of pissed off people if it kills Chewy. Oh yeah, I'm well aware. I want to bring up uh, with that trailer. I want to bring up the, uh, the biggest thing that stood out to me actually is this one line um, when she's talking to BB-8 and she's like, "I know all about waiting for my family." That line literally confirms that she's either that she's a Skywalker or a Solo. Yeah, exactly. I'm still leading towards Skywalker. No, I still think Solo. The question, the question that I'd like to ask is, do you think she's a? Well, EJ is attempting to come back. Do you think she's I'm here? Can you hear me? Do you think she's oh, sister? You. Is that what you're going to ask? No. I was going to. If I can, give, if I can give my two cents, if they are holo, solo kids, then they are also uh, related to to uh, Luke. Since Leia is Luke's sis sister, therefore, no matter what, that statement holds true, no matter who she's waiting for. <laughs> yeah, as I said, she's a Skywalker, either way. It's just who her father is. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, the, the, the Duracell released that at that trailer. Yeah. So, that, yeah. Didn't that set spoilers. the internet on fire? Oh. <laughs> I'll admit, I read into things a, a bit. I... People reading the things way too much. Yeah, I, I got a feeling it's too. It's meant to be just two kids playing dressed in dressed exactly. in the clothes. That's all it is. But people are like, I mean, oh my really, god, she's using false abilities. <laughs> really awesomely well done trailer. Uh, oh yeah, the trailer looks spectacular. Yeah, it's like it's uh, it's almost like that. This um, it's almost like that old beer ad we had over here. The this ad better sell some bloody beer. <laughs> 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 when Lord of the Rings came out, they used to save people for it. No, no, my favorite one is a. <laughs> Yeah, that one. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. I love that. That ad was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That was hilarious. Back in the days of Lord of the Rings. But yeah, um, I think another really interesting um, uh, shot in the, in the uh, international trailer that dropped is the one of um, Kylo, the lightsaber he's held, holding up against Rey. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> shit's about to go down. Yeah. Yeah. And the look on his face is like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, his face is just like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Why am I doing this? The scale of 1 to 10 of bad ideas, this is at least there's a 15. Actually a, there's a really big rumor that yeah. um, Finn is actually Lando's kid. Yeah. Because it, it's like, who else would have... Because it's like, there's no one else it could be. Yeah, and Lando, I believe, is going to be in 8. Yeah, the, there is a, a thing that um he, that Billy D might have a cameo in eight. So yeah. Um, uh, actually, funny thing, I met Billy D Williams at one of those convention signings that actually also had uh Doug Jones too. And uh, but I asked Billy, he's like, so are you ever gonna do the new Star Wars? Because this was in the early stages of the new stuff. He's like, yeah, if they give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> of course he would. Yeah. So, so we well we suspect that um, Admiral Akbar is going to be in the next couple. So yeah. yeah. Careful! It's a trap. We know. Well, we know he's in seven. He confirmed that he was in seven, but I think he's going to be more than just seven. I think he's going to be yeah. the, all, in all three. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to um, the whatever conflict involves him because yeah, yeah. And I think I finally cracked. Uh, uh, I think I finally cracked as to why there's no Luke. Oh, do tell. I think I know why he's gone into hermit mode, and I, I don't think uh, I originally said it was because he trained the Knights of Ren, yes. and they turned on him. I'm changing that. 
I think what I think the reason why Kylo the the whole I will finish what you started. I think Kylo is hunting for sensitives, and I think that village you see gets completely torched by um the flame troopers. I think there's four sensitive kids in the village, and I think Luke's protecting them. And I think, I think they all get killed off, and I think Luke goes in a hermit or something. Yeah. I think that's it's either that or the, the Knights of Ren It's one of those two options. No. Yeah, well, you'll find out in December. Yeah, you'll find out in in what yeah. four weeks, five weeks. Yeah, not not too long now. Yeah. Just just under just over a month out. So definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, I got tickets to one of those. You, you, we, uh, where, where you start at like one a.m. Yeah, midnight and screenings. Watch all six movies, and then you see the new one. <sighs> oh, oh no. nice! Screw that! I've got we a, don't have those here. I got a, I got a sixty-inch TV and and all the Blu-rays. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, but but then you won't be in the audience, and I'm totally gonna troll everyone and wear something Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be shot and dragged out. No, no, no. <laughs> so over over in the states, it's oh, this the, isn't Batman, okay? Over, over in the states, um, you guys have been sort of told most cinemas are banning all the Star Wars gear. Over here, no, no, no. What they're doing is they're banning masks and 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 anything that looks like a gun. Yeah, and lightsabers. Yeah, it's all a safety. Thing. No, no, lightsabers are allowed. No, no. The news we got a couple of days ago was lightsabers are banned as well. Yeah. No, because the one I signed up for says lightsabers yeah. are okay. So okay. here's an interesting, here's an interesting thing about the premiere for that. So because now Star Wars is owned by Disney, in Hollywood we have the Chinese theater, which is you know, where the original Star Wars debuted. Yeah. Uh, and and then uh, across the street is the El Capitan, which is Disney's theater. Now there's a rule that the El Capitan can only show Disney movies, so the Chinese theater never actually. Can show any of the, those movies. So, are they going to? The uh, question is, are they going to have both Star Wars playing in both op- places, or is it only the El Capitan is going to have it and all? Because they haven't really discussed uh, where that's going to go. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Over here, one of the guys that works in a shop just down the road from me is part of the Five O First, and mm-hmm. they've actually got free entry to a heap of the cinemas around here. If they come in full kit and Bastards. help sort of do the, the entry for the midnight showing. To me. So, we just got to join the 501st. Yeah, I'm working on it. So, Not that far off. <laughs> so, yeah. I know some members of the 501st. Um, I also happen to know... Uh, what the uh, hell? Are you eating the a microphone? A... Sounds like somebody's eating a microphone. <laughs> um, as a fellow nerd, uh, I'll tell you guys that uh, my family owns the DeLorean time machine. Nice. Uh, the original, or...? I know it's replica. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they own, he owns so, a car, okay, guys? Yeah, that is at Universal Studios uh, currently, uh, but uh, we, we are... <laughs> no, you of, think uh, it's at Universal Studios currently. It, it might be in my garage. They just no, think no, they've got the original. I, have, see, I know exactly where it is, and I met Bob Gale personally, and he's like, that's where it is. Uh, no, 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 they think <laughs> they've got the original, but it might be a replica. Uh, no, because uh, there's a whole documentary about restoring the whole thing, so no, it's the, it's the real A car. Damn it. He's stirring. Yeah. I know. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So as I was saying, uh, there's a guy, uh, uh, we are a part of movie cars, so we hang out with a bunch of other movie car guys. Uh, there's this gentleman named Sean Kenobi. He dresses up at... Um, as a Jedi. Did we lose it? No, no. It's... Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought we lost. Um, so uh, he dresses up as uh, a Jedi, uh, but he has um, I forgot what what he he pretty much decorated his entire car as like kind of a land speeder look like. <laughs> um, That's pretty you, cool. I don't know if you've seen the TV show The Goldbergs. No. Uh, yeah, there's a uh, there's a cameo. He has a cameo because he also has a Yoda puppet. So he's uh, it's it's it takes place in the 80s. So the character is waiting in line for Empire Strikes Back, and he's sitting in line playing with the Yoda puppet. But yeah, no, it's uh, he's really cool because like he pretty much lives and breathes uh, uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Sounds like me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Nice. But since it's not an official Star car, because this car is technically a tribute car, because you know there were no cars in Star Wars. Yeah. It's yeah. not official. It's not an official movie car, but it'll be used anytime you know the Star Wars event. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, enough of enough of Star Wars for now. It's time to move on to Eugene's model kits. So, what have you got Hello. for us this week? This week, being we're covering Star Wars, I decided to cover the Star Wars kits that Ravel Monogram has been doing nice. for in honor of Star Wars The Force Awakens. Yep. yep. Well, as a model shop, um, I refuse to carry the Star Wars kits because I think Ravel has missed the boat on these. Ever, for years, Ravel has chosen to do nothing but snap together pre-painted kits. As a model builder myself, I look at the kits and I go, um, I'd like something with at least a little bit of a challenge. Oh, that's boring. I like the snap together kits. They're easy and I'm lazy, so it works for me. Well, they're doing three types of kits. They're doing a build and play snap together kits that have, um, all of them have sound, some of them have lights and sound. And that line, they have the Resistance X-Wing Fighter. They have the Millennium Falcon, the First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter, and Poe's X-Wing Fighter. Suggested retail at your hobby stores runs about $30 U.S. Uh, about Walmart, 60 to 70 bucks Australian. Um, Walmart and Target run them about 10 bucks less. Then they're doing <laughs> What, what's called the Snap Max series. In this line, they have the X or the Millennium Falcon, which retails for eighty-seven dollars. Oh, that'll be at least one hundred and thirty or forty over here. The Resistance X-wing fighter, which runs for thirty-eight dollars. The First Order Tie fighter, which is fifty dollars. Poe's X-wing fighter, which runs thirty-eight dollars. Kylo Ren's command shuttle, which is $50. Then they did something interesting. They went back to fine molds of Japan. Fine molds of Japan had the license to do Star Wars kits for a number of years, and these kits lived up to the name. They did a 172nd scale kits that had phenomenal detail. And they were based on the original Star Wars films. Nice, nice. The first three that are coming out is the X-Wing Fighter, which will retail for uh, $97. Oof. The TIE Fighter, which will retail for $78. Mm-hmm. And the Millennium Falcon. Before I give you the price, let me tell you a little bit about the Falcon. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> the, the fa- when they were built, making the model of the Falcon, they actually went to Lucas Archives. And as they were taking pictures, they get around to the back of the Falcon, and they see that there's no detail for the engines. So they said to Lucas, there's nothing here. He goes, yeah, it's a special effect. Well, what would, what would it look like if it wasn't lit up? So he gave them some sketches, and that's what they put in the model kit. Oh, that's really cool. This kit has ten figures with it. In the crews from the fir- from episode 04, episode 5, I think episode 6, you can build it, land it, you can build it in flight. Uh, How big is it this has, thing? It's about a foot long and has about 900 pieces. Holy crap. And it retails for $348 US. Ow. So about seven hundred dollars here. Yeah, like you effectively double the US cost to Australia, because uh, even though the exchange rate isn't that, you've also got to cover postage, and they're now shops making money say, on top. I was going to say, I did not think the exchange so, rate had gotten that bad. No, the, the exchange rate got as bad as about I think the lowest we got was sixty cents to the dollar, but then we kicked out the the, the worst prime minister we have ever had in history, and the second worst prime minister has taken over and. It's gone back up a bit. <laughs> now, there is another batch of Star Wars kits that are not available in the U.S., and those are the ones by Bandai. 
And they're also doing uh, snap together kits in 172nd scale of the X Wing and TIE Fighter. And they're also doing an ATST. And then they're doing one six scale figures. And they're being done the same way the Gundam figures are. These are snap together, fully posable. And the price on the website Hobby Link Japan, HLJ.com. I love Hobby, Hobby Link. That's where uh, I get all my zoids from. Well, you'll find these on there. And I want to say they're only about 20 or $30 US. There should be a tab at the top right hand side of the page that allows you to change it to US dollars. <coughs> But those are interesting kits. I, I know they have Darth Vader. They have C-3PO. They've got a Stormtrooper. Um, R2-D2 and R5-D4 are among the figures that are available. But because of licensing, we can't get them in the U.S. unless you've managed to find a hobby shop that pulled them in and they have to charge more because of the cost they had to pay to begin with. Yeah, uh, Hobby League Japan's really good. If, um, they've got a wholesaling section as well so they'll sell it to you at a, a substantially cheaper price than what they sell it to the public if you buy say a thousand dollars worth a month which most people can't <laughs> yeah that's not happening yeah we got a friend who hawk's got a friend who can get him yeah yeah um what was his group called again he's the 105th armory that's it yeah but that, that's my report for this week. And as always, it's brought to you by Iperi County Hobbies. Sweet. Thanks for that. Um, it's time to do the news with Stuart. Yep. And I'm going to start with a bit of personal news, actually. Okay. Uh, as of yesterday, I'm confirmed that I will be at the Chermside Midnight launch of Star Wars Battlefront in full gear with my Saber Forge orange lightsaber and my Force FX light lightsabers to for people to take photos with. I went down and talked to the manager yesterday. Nice. So I will be there from 10 p.m. when the store opens on next Wednesday. Nice. So yeah, I wanted to get that one out of the way first. Yeah. Um, and now to prop now after proper news. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. Proper news. I'll start. Um, we've just started up a new Facebook page for specifically for the podcast. It's facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast, one word. Um, no hyphens for anything. And we'll be posting up event news and stuff like that for what we're doing there. And um, yeah, just throwing that out there. So we'll still be doing posting all of the details up on facebook.com slash save sci-fi, but um events and stuff like that will be on the podcast page so if you want to keep it on the podcast give us a like and then you'll see the events every time we announce one uh, anyway let's do it back to you yep and so we'll start off with the flash so uh this week's episode is called enter zoom About so we bloody actually... time <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this week uh they actually plan to trap zoom we actually have, get to have a, a, a proper look at the zoom outfit like he's not blurring and stuff that's what Flash does. Yeah. No, no, no. Zoom, we could have a look at. Yeah, I know that, but you know what I'm meaning. Yeah. yeah. And a couple of the stills is interesting, because there's fan theories of who Zoom is. Yeah. I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to put my two piece into this one. I think it's Earth 2 Barry. Earth 2 uh, well, Barry? Uh, Ooh. Why, did, why would Barry be attacking himself? Because all Zoom well, cares, have... all Zoom cares about is being the only speedster. He doesn't care who it is. Yeah. And how else would he know to attack people? How else would he know to send like people after Barry specific? Yeah, like when they sent over Doctor Light and stuff. Yeah. Or there's another theory there. It's Barry's dad, which would really throw a spanner in the works. Oh yeah. The only way that could throw a spanner in the works more is if Barry's dad had died in this universe at some point. <laughs> But yeah, no, um, looking really, and the suit looks really awesome. And I've noticed something with the zoom, with the zoom outfit. He's got the ring, like, um, the reverse flash. Nice. The ring that had the suit in it, so. So that's a cool little tie in once again to the comics. I have been keeping up with the, the season. And Arrow's episode this week is called uh, Lost Souls, where they go and save uh, Ray. 
so they're so they're bringing um at so they're bringing Adam back, setting up for um Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, it was sort of cool, but the question remains: What's going to happen with the whole Adam thing now that Felicity's back in her on again relationship with um with Ollie? Yeah, with Oliver. Yeah. Wow, my brain is just not naming today. Wow, you guys have episodes we don't. You do? Yeah. Are you talking about the upcoming week? Or it's already aired? We're talking about arrows that's coming up. Okay, yeah. I thought you were talking about this week. Uh, EJ doesn't follow those shows. Well, I have been following this season. For this season, but I have. uh, Also, fun story. uh, I happen to know uh, some people on, on the show... Uh, the behind-the-scenes people, they all... Uh, the Flash, uh, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl, because it's all by the same guy. Yeah. It's all in one office. Uh, they shoot in Canada, Arrow, and and The Flash, but Supergirl is shot here in Los Angeles. But So the creator doesn't have to run around to several different buildings. He can just literally go in one office and the other. So they're all in the same building together here in Hollywood. Nice. So yeah, uh, moving on to Star Wars news, because there's always Star Wars news. Yep. <laughs> but it's that time of the month. <laughs> it's that it's time of the time year. <laughs> it's that, that time of the year. Yep. Um, so uh, so uh, we all know how those awesome uh, movie posters that came out a couple of weeks ago, the individual shots. Yeah. So um, uh, Finn, Ray, and Kylo Ren actually have movie banners now. Oh, nice. So... Uh, uh, Kylo's one is he's got uh, those video. It's a little easy to to show, but he's got his hand out in the front, and then he's got his lightsaber um, pointing to so like um, Obi Wan style pose. We've got uh, we've got uh, Ray with that staff, which you still have no idea what that staff is, but it's the staff. Always, that staff is in every shot, so there has to be there has to be some meaning to it. And then the last one is uh, Finn. Who's got his lightsaber pointing backwards? Like it's like the blade has got over his shoulder. So, so, so he's holding it um, downhand as opposed to uphand. Yeah. Yeah. The very Ahsoka. Yeah. Um, moving on to some Batman news. Yep. So, so uh, Batman ba- uh, Bad Blood is the next anime movie they're doing. Um, it gets a release. It's got a release date. It's coming out uh, January nineteenth next year. And the story is that Bruce has gone MIA, and Nightwing has had, has to take over as Bat as Batman, and they're trying to find him. And this movie brings in uh, Batwing and Batwoman. Oh, nice! So slowly Bat- getting the Bat- the Bat family together. Yeah. I, I remember seeing who the guests were, and I just drew a blank on it. But once again, the <laughs> my, my drawing blank on names is contagious. But I know it ha I know it like all the other ones. They've got some good guests in this film. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to the one they do afterwards, which is going to be the Killing Joke. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're doing an animated Killing Joke, and it is being given rated R, so it's going to be full dark. Nice. So yeah. Uh, Keeping up with uh, Battlefront news, Star Wars Battlefront, there's a uh, a live action trailer that's a, that's a little bit funny. It's um Anna, Anna Kendrick use, holding a butter knife as a lightsaber using using the uh, the Obi Wan line, "If you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine." Then she gets and then it shows uh, some new footage from the actual game. So a little bit of fun with that. Nice. And that's pretty much it for news. Nothing um, else major I've missed, I don't think. Have you got um, anything? I'll, I'll remind everybody about the um, Kickstarter for uh, Renegades. They're just under 50%. So if anybody's interested in backing Renegades, it's, they're still on Kickstarter. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, uh, last bit of news. Uh, Constantine fans uh, have launched a petition to continue the show on on CW after 
after a really awesome um, cameo on Arrow last week. Yeah, after watching him on Arrow, I've actually ploughed through the entire se- series of Constantine, and I would definitely be looking forward to more. Oh, he's, I was going to mention done, that a little bit earlier. Yeah, he's done amazing, amazing uh, yeah. work on the role. So yeah, and it'd be good if, he if, if, he, if they do pick it up. It'd be good to have some sort of crossplay between the Constantine series and the Arrow series as well. Sort yeah. of bring them all together into one massive sort of thing would be spectacular. But and yeah, it's, it's um, what DC also, really needs to do is make a coherent universe. Arrow and Flash is doing a pretty damn good job. <laughs> Supergirl not being yeah. part of that is a tad disappointing, but makes 110% sense. <laughs> well, because they are doing it as um, Arrow and Flash having no powers, really. So, yeah. Flash having no powers? What? Well, she means... Um, uh, how do you put it? Less timey-wimey, more really wheely <laughs> If that makes sense. <laughs> well, I think because they introduced the Flash, which has powers, they kind of had to yeah. do it that way. Uh, you know, And now it's getting to be that way. So they, But because they have to cross paths with each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Fun. They originally started as no powers. Yeah. Exactly. It originally started off as sort of a dark and gritty sort of show, and it's moved away from that, thankfully. Otherwise, that could have become very tiring very quickly. Well, yeah. I mean, he couldn't be—he couldn't be, he couldn't be uh, that uh, that, that type arrow. of character. That, yeah, he could be that terror. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, even, even Batman kind of lightens up later, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One last thing, I just want to mention. Um, Garrison 7 has got some really interesting news coming if you haven't gone over and liked their Facebook page definitely do it keep an eye on it they've got something big they're going to announce in the next couple of days I'm not allowed to say what or I would I'm just saying go over there keep an eye on it send them the love from us ow I think that was EJ flatlining <laughs> Yep, that happened. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, other than that, is there anything else I can think of that um, I was going to mention? There was something. The movie you saw over the weekend? Oh, no. yes. That's next week. I was going to say, um, me and Amy went and watched 3010 on the weekend, just gone. And they're going to be joining us next week for the... The creator and the... Um, I think it was the, the two creators are looking at joining us next week. On the podcast, so that's going to be really, really cool. So, definitely looking forward to that. The week after that is pre-Supernova. The week after that is post-Supernova, plus whatever else we want to jam in. We're probably going to cover Supergirl next week as well. Or okay. maybe the week after, um, depending on how much time we've got. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to all of that. So, I guess that'll do us for this week. Yeah. Unless, finishing on time. Yeah, finishing on time for a change. So, unless anyone has anything uh, else they want to say. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> two beeps means no. <laughs> Mr. Star Trek. Yeah, well, what, what, what you guys are hearing is, is we're on my phone and I'm getting notifications. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the vibrations here coming through the loudspeaker. Which is pretty funny. <laughs> and loud. Oh, ridiculously loud. I'd like to apologize for that. Send all hate mail to ej at nobility.com. No. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I don't even know if that's a real email, so I don't even try. <laughs> no, it is not, thankfully. <laughs> As EJ's heard, they like... changed his email. <laughs> <laughs> like broadcasting my email? A little bit. Because... <laughs> I think I've made it up, but it'd be hilarious if it's actually right. Um, yeah. Oh, there was something else. What was it? I'm going to remember it like two minutes after the show's over. That's okay. Write it down and you'll do it next show. Nah, I'll cover it next week. Whatever. Keep an eye on facebook.com slash save sci-fi for all your sci-fi news, bringing together all of the different independent sci-fi projects we can find into one house. Um, keep an eye on Garrison 7 because they've got some awesome stuff coming. Uh, don't worry about that nobility show. It's obviously not going to be that good um, 
Oi! <laughs> I was waiting for EJ to bite, but uh, whatever. So anyway. Chomp, 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 chomp. Anyway, we'll, <laughs> 10 seconds left. Catch you next week, guys. Bye, all. Bye. Bye. Meow.